What's up everyone? My name is Zach. Welcome to the Last Llama Gaming Channel. Today I have a quick beginner's guide for Warhammer Chaos Bane. We're going to start with the character selection. I'm going to give you a brief overview of the differences between the melee and the ranged. And then we're going to dive into some tips that should help your gaming experience go a lot smoother than if you were to just jump in blind. Alright guys, so first we have the character selection. Your two melees will be Empire Soldier and Slayer. Your two range will be High Elf and Wood Elf. So the primary difference between melee and range is melee has sweeping attacks. They're going to hit all enemies in a small vicinity around them. And the ranged characters will have line attacks. They're going to shoot far, but they're only going to hit a singular group of enemies in that line for the most part. So with the melee characters, you want to be in the middle of the fight, surrounded by enemies. That's how you're going to do the most damage. With the ranged characters, you're inevitably going to be in the middle of the fight as well, but you want to escape from the center of the mob. And then that's how you're going to do the most damage is by hitting a large group of enemies in a line. So that's just a quick overview. And depending on which play style sounds more fitting for you, that should help you decide right off the bat, getting a better idea. And then if you want to get more information, you can actually select and that will tell you more about each character. All right, guys, up next, we have the difficulty. So you can actually change the difficulty in game. It's right here in the pause menu. So as you can see, chaos modes are blacked out. I wouldn't even worry about those. You don't unlock those till after you beat the game. So I am playing on hard and I think it's pretty manageable. And as you can see, loot quality, gold, and fragments goes up each difficulty level. So obviously pick the highest one you can successfully complete the game at. I recommend hard. Um, I've never played one of these kinds of games before, an ARPG and I've got through the entire game thus far on hard mode without a whole lot of trouble. So, but if it's too hard for you, pick normal, pick easy. Whatever you can do, pick whichever is best for you. All right guys, so the next tip I have for you is uh, go ahead and take a look up here in the upper right hand corner at my map. So I'm right here in the middle, there's two paths to take. So what you could do is go up this left path, I already cleared all the enemies, fight all the enemies, destroy the barrels and keep going and keep going that way which is your objective but what you should do is you should come around to this side and clear all of these enemies and check and see for any chests or barrels because there's sometimes there are chests on the uh, opposite side even uh, on an unassuming section of the map like this uh, I can't tell you how many times I played the game and I went back all the way back across the level to go to a part of the map I didn't explore and there was a chest and I got very good gear out of it. So always explore the map completely. Up next we have a very simple, a very obvious, but also a very good tip. And it's these right here, barrels. So they also come in other objects such as pots, but all you wanna do is destroy them. Don't overlook them. You could just keep going, don't overlook them. Destroy them and go pick them up. I just got, how much gold is that? 230 gold for destroying those two chests. Gold is important in this game because it's how you revive and it's also how you upgrade your god skill tree. And I'm sure in end game, I haven't made it to end game yet, it's going to have another use. So you want as much gold as possible and there's barrels and pots scattered all over the levels. And if you bypass them, you're missing out on thousands of gold each match. So break all of them even if you have to go out of your way to do it. Alright guys, so the next tip is an in-game tip. So as you go throughout the level, you're going to level up. I'm level 30 right now. I'm about to hit level 31. You're going to want to change your gear frequently. So I just opened this chest. I got some new gear. Let's check it out. So as you can see, this is one of the pieces I just got. All those green numbers over here are means it's better you can hit you can compare and so I'm wearing a level 29 I just got a level 30 piece of gear so obviously I want to switch that out I'm gonna go ahead and switch that out and then 
these boots are better than the boots I'm wearing for the most part so I could switch those out I could switch those boots out so some levels you're gonna level up multiple times you could go in at level 29 and come out at level 31 so you could get level 31 gear while you're in the mission from chests from enemy drops and the enemies scale with you so you're gonna be fighting level 31 enemies but you're gonna be wearing level 29 gear so always when you get gear check and see if it's better than what you have and swap it out in game swap it out frequently it'll make the missions go a lot better Alright guys, so I have a super useful combat tip real fast. Take a look down here at my health bar. I have 70% health. These are all my skills. So just whatever character you pick, they all have one. Equip a healing ability, or a healing passive. Because you only get one potion in this game. And it takes, a, what, 28 seconds it says to cool down? So if you're on low health, and you don't have a potion, you're, you're out of luck, and you will probably die. So what I did was... This ability right here regenerates my health. I just unlocked it. So I also have a passive skill that whenever I consume energy, I gain health. So let's see, when I use my fire breath, that consumes energy and I gain health. So let's take a look at that real fast. So look at my, above my head, I have green numbers popping up, 94, like 10 a second. And look at my health, it's going up extremely fast. And so I'm doing damage while gaining health. So find an ability that lets you do that and it'll add up over time and it'll increase your survivability by a ton. All right guys, so the next tip is on how to use your bloodlust ability. You get it fairly early in the game and it doesn't really do a good job explaining to you what it does. So it'll be over here on these two little circles. At first you're only gonna have one, you progressively unlock more as you play. And so I'm gonna demonstrate to you how to use it effectively and how to use it properly. So I suggest you get as much enemies as possible. If you look up here, I have a ton following me. And so what Bloodlust does is it pretty much puts you in a powered up state and it allows you to kill a ton of enemies very quickly. But the key is that it also makes those enemies drop fragments. Fragments are a key item in upgrading your character. So you want as many of those as you can get. So let's go ahead and demonstrate. So I just activated it. And as you can see, I am pretty much melting everything. And if you look at my health down in the bottom left, it heals you as well. Which allows you to stay alive while you're using it. So let's go ahead and mop up these other characters. Okay, so as you can see, there's a ton of fragments. You wouldn't get this many fragments throughout the entire mission um, without using that bloodlust. Don't just use it to clear enemies. Use it tactically to kill as many enemies as possible and get as many fragments as possible. Alright guys, the final tip and probably the most complicated but also the most useful tip is about skill point allocation. So if you look down here, at, I'm in the skill section of my menu. I have 65 points, skill points available to me. So your goal is to maximize this. You don't want to have any points available or if you do, you want the least amount. So say you have six damaging abilities. They're on this left side right here. Say you only use three of these, and you hardly ever use these other three. Don't keep these equipped if you're not using them. You know, if you're not using this one, unequip, unequip, unequip. Now you have 13 ability points, and you still have all the damaging abilities that you need, because these are the only ones that you use. And then you could come over here to your passive section. These three are your passives, and you could equip an upgraded passive <clears throat> so instead of this level 4 right here that you may have only been able to equip earlier because you had all of these skill slots filled you can now equip a level 12 one and you still have all the damaging abilities that you need and vice versa say you don't like any of the passives you have unequip them or equip the lower tier ones 
by the way this number in this left hand uh, on the icon that's how many skill points it takes unequip your passives and then uh, equip upgraded abilities so for example I'll just show you my my loadouts my train of thought I like the missile I like the step between worlds it's my teleport but I don't really have a use for this sixth ability so I'm not gonna equip a 15 point skill there and never use it or even a five point skill there and never use it so what I've decided to do is come down to my passive I always use this passive and I always use this passive so this is, was my setup right here but now that I have more skill points I can equip the upgraded version that's 12 and I still have four left over so then what I can do is go back up to my abilities and check out the four point ones and say equip the phantom blade boom I mean it's maxed out it's efficient I have all the abilities I need and I even have one for extra measure that I probably won't ever use but it's there if I need to so just take a good look at your skills and figure out the best and most efficient setup only only use what you need that way you can get more effectiveness from your other skills such as passes I may be a little long-winded but I think you understand what I'm trying to say and with that that wraps up all of my tips I hope this quick guide helped you if it did help consider subscribing and leaving a like I will be posting similar guides to this as well as playthrough and character builds whenever I hit in game so I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video